All right, bulls and bears, welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Black Saturday. It's actually not. There's no such thing as Black Saturday. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. But yesterday was Black Friday. Uh, you're watching this on Saturday. Yesterday was Black Friday. Um, I had just had Saturday in my head. Anyways, let's talk about the economy, the financial system, uh, what's happening with consumers. Was Black Friday a bust? Was it a boom or was it a bust? First of all, what did you see at your local stores? I went into my Target and I, I was going to film, but I had a couple kids with me, one of them being autistic. I decided not a good idea to film, but it was pretty crowded. Took us about, not bad, five minutes to check out at the self-checkout. Uh, not too bad at all. I didn't see the craziness like I usually saw, like with lines and things like that. Also looking at some videos online, which we're going to view some here in a bit. I didn't see the craziness that we saw. Remember those Walmart videos where people were like trampling each other, stuff like that. I didn't see the craziness. So is that a sign of the economy weakening, the consumer being too loaded up on credit card debt? Uh, or is it just that people are shopping online? Uh, well, we see some things happening with Amazon, too, that we're going to talk about here in just a bit. So if you've got a lot of financial economic news, as always, to get caught up on today, please make sure you are subscribed. And let's go ahead and get into the news here. The Dow Jones was up 200 points on Black Friday. It was a shorter trading day, but it was a pretty big day. We're still seeing this euphoria. A lot of people with a lot of optimism on what's going to be happening here with the economy, with the new administration taking over in January. Now, I would urge some caution. We're headed into uncharted territory, folks, uncharted territory. Now, some people say, well, the same guy was in office from 2016 to 2020. We know exactly what he's going to do. Um, that's partly true, but there's a lot of new things being implemented, like all the migrants that are supposed to be sent out of the country. What's that going to look like, folks? Nobody knows. I mean, this is, again, uncharted territory. So I would be very cautious. Be optimistic, but be cautious because, again, a lot of the things being rolled out we've never seen before. We've never seen the threat to cut uh, government spending. They're calling it uh, DOGE, Department of Government Efficiency with Elon Musk. Uh, running it, threatening to cut hundreds of thousands. I've, I've got to get the number for you, but hundreds of thousands of government jobs. So we've never, so how, how is that going to look? What's the economy going to look like with that many people losing their job at once? And where are all these people going to work at, right? So cutting in one area seems like it might just be spending more in another area. And maybe I'm wrong. Again, we've never seen this. So there's no historical uh, precedent <laughs> To look at and say, oh, here's what happened the last time we did this. On this large of a scale, we've never seen this. So maybe I'm wrong. Um, let me know down in the comments what you think about it. But if you get rid of that many jobs at once, uh, and then you have to end up paying unemployment to these people, where's the unemployment going to come from? All right, Are they just going to have to borrow more money and go deeper into debt to pay unemployment for all these job losses? Or will these people find jobs in other areas? Maybe other industries, other occupations. But what's that going to look like when you have so many people applying now for all these other jobs? That means the companies may pay less. If you have so many people trying to find jobs, that puts the companies in a position of power because they have more people to choose from and they can offer to pay less because there's not a shortage of workers. There's actually an overage or an abundance of workers if that were to happen. So again, who knows? We've never seen anything like that, but Dow Jones up 200 points in a short session. S&P, best month of 2024. That was November. All right, there were a lot of people that said that November could have been a wild month. Same thing with October. Um, when is the you-know-what going to hit the fan, folks? Because we know something's out there, and could it be with these new... Uh, new uh, implementations of these new laws, the new administration in January, or will it be just more of the same? Maybe all of this is a nothing burger. There will be no uh, dumping of the dollar. We talked about how the BRICS nations were out there talking about dumping the dollar in a night of the shift, which was kind of like a theory that was going around that these BRICS nations had something big planned for the U.S. dollar. But now with the results... And the new administration now, we know who it is. 
Uh, that seems to have shifted. Now there's talk that they're not going to dump the dollar because they think that the new administration is going to be much more efficient and is going to still have uh, basically the dollar um, as their focus on maintaining the strength of the dollar. Well, even with all the spending and the deficit spending uh, and all the printing and everything else, the dollar was still pretty strong compared to uh, around the globe and all these other currencies around the world. So it's pretty interesting, folks. And uh, I apologize. I just got a, a case of the hiccups here, so I'm going to open a drink. What is this here? Virgil's Root Beer. Zero sugar. I hope it's sweetened with stevia because I don't like some of those artificial sweeteners. I apologize. I usually don't do this on camera. Excuse me. Carbonated drinks helps me get rid of hiccups. I don't know why. A lot of news to get caught up on, though. Let's go ahead and get started right here. Amazon. Workers in 20 countries are protesting or on strike on Black Friday. So how are all these Black Friday gifts going to get delivered? This many people striking. Uh, they even have the logo pointing down with the frown face, so it's no longer erect. Um, forget, forget I said that. I didn't want to use that word erect. <laughs> the logo is pointing downward. There's a frown on the logo. Thousands of Amazon workers expected the protest or strike on Black Friday. Workers and representatives from unions and worker groups intend to join protests against Seattle-based companies' practices. One of the biggest shopping weekends of the year. So basically the bottom line comes down to they feel like they're not getting paid enough for the amount of work they have to do. I think we reported a couple years ago where the delivery drivers, the Amazon truck drivers, were afraid to stop and use the bathroom because of their uh, schedule and how timely they had to be on their deliveries. And they were like using the, actually going in a bottle. I'm trying to figure out, <laughs> I'm trying to think of a word to phrase this, a way to phrase it without being obscene, you know, with the guidelines. Uh, maybe, I think they were going in a bottle, if you know what I mean. Uh, during the annual discounting period, Amazon and many other retailers offer deals to shoppers. Action is planned in big cities across the world, uh, U.S., Germany, U.K., Turkey, Canada, too many other to name, um, or coordinated by the Make Amazon Pay campaign, the world's second richest man, pay workers fairly and respect their rights to join unions, spearheaded. So here's the thing. Would Amazon have such good prices if it were not for the low wages that they pay these workers? And maybe you think Amazon's not very good. I mean, Timu is pretty good. Timu is pretty good, but they seem to have maybe not as good quality merchandise. But again, I bought things off Amazon that didn't work out too well either. They fell apart quickly and like clothing where the stitching started coming out after a few months, right? So it's not all about quality products. But what do you think about this, folks? The protest in the inverted logo. Looks crazy, right? All right, folks, let's go ahead and shift gears a little bit. I've got some articles pulled up here, and let's just talk about some of these articles, headlines. Americans' attitude towards the economy is dramatically off from years past. Uh, that's a radio host warning that. I don't think I can play that clip. I think I'll get nailed if I do that. Um, National Debt Tracker. American taxpayers, that's you and me, on the hook for over $36 trillion. <laughs> I always have to laugh when I see that, folks. Do you think anybody's going to be able to pay back their portion of the $36 trillion? People can't even pay back their personal debt and pay off their credit cards. How are they going to pay back or pay off the national debt, folks? That, that's just a joke. So when they say people are on the hook, actually not. No, it's going to end up getting discharged in some way, some manner. Uh, I, I do believe the country's bankrupt. There's no way this debt can be paid back. Again, we can't even pay back our own consumer debt. Our own consumer debt. Is it $18 trillion? Um, Let me just look it up here real quick here. Our own consumer debt here. Just one moment here. Usually I have all this stuff pulled up here. I apologize here. So <clears throat> going to find it and get you the number because if I say the wrong number, people will be telling me I'm wrong down in comments. And again, usually I have these charts all pulled up and ready to go here. 
Uh, let's see here. And here we go. As of the end of the third quarter, just about 18 trillion. I was pretty close, right? Um, 17.94 trillion. That was the end of the third quarter. That was um, uh, end of September. So we've had the full month of October, and now we're done with November, basically going into December. So I would guess that it's definitely above 18. Oh, yeah, it has to be above 18 trillion, no doubt about it. Uh, mortgage debt, $12.5 trillion. Credit card debt, $1.16 trillion. Other debt, a half a trillion. Uh, it's wacky town, folks. Uh, there's no way. There's no way we can pay this off. We can't even pay off this $18 trillion personal debt. Right? We just don't have the savings. It's impossible. And what's going to make people start saving more money? Right? Is something big going to happen to make people start saving more money so they can pay off this debt? Of course not. It's going to get worse. Things are going to get more expensive. Cost of living is going to go higher. But, but maybe I'm wrong. Again, if I'm wrong about this, let me know down in the comments. We have a whole new ball game starting in January. Many, many, many things uh, are going to drop in January, for lack of a better term. They're going to drop and drop hard because we've never seen all these new actions, executive orders, uh, new laws, new policies. Uh, we've never seen these types of things get implemented here. And I apologize. I'm trying to fight off the hiccups here. Uh, it can never happen, folks. They can never pay this off. Uh, so back to this news roundup here. It's impossible, folks. American taxpayers are on the hook. <laughs> How are we going to pay this off? We can, 18 trillion, 36 trillion. What do you got? Uh, over 50 trillion just right there. You've got unfunded liabilities, another 100 trillion. If you want to keep pay paying people Social Security and all these other obligations. Uh, we've got global debt at 300 400 trillion if you count derivatives amongst all the banks globally you're in the quadrillions nobody even knows the number that's how big it is right and they can't even keep track of how much debt there is literally it's too the numbers are too big so they go into the quadrillions you, you can't even track it folks um let's see here food lines are exploding i, I read that headline earlier i'm not sure if it's going to show up here Mortgage demand jumps as rates drop. Uh, Fed's favored inflation gauge ticked up in October. We talked about that well, one or two reports ago. Uh, anyways, let's go ahead and jump over to some housing market and real estate news. And the cost of even renting in some cities has become just beyond bonkers, folks. And we're going to talk about some Black Friday uh, deals and the number of shoppers at certain outlets, and even going to go over some videos. But in New York, so many people are paying a broker fee. Now they passed a bill, council passed a bill, that shifts broker fees to landlords. A bill that would swap broker fees from the renter to the landlord. On average, New Yorkers shell out 15% of their annual rent on broker's fees. Because it's so competitive in New York, you have to find a broker to help you get an apartment. Now those broker's fees will be shifted to the landlords. And guess what? The landlords, are they just going to eat that or are they going to just raise their rent? I think they're going to raise their rent. So now we need to pass a law to prevent them from raising their rents, which they already have rent controls in some areas. Uh, and does it seem to be working? Well, the argument is, yeah, that, that it's working, that it would be even higher rents without, the, uh, without these caps. The Fairness and Apartment Rentals Act says whoever hires the broker, either the renter or the landlord, would be on the hook to pay the fee. If you're from New York, please let me know what you experienced. I watched a few videos on this, people telling about how much they had to pay uh, total in rent. We need to find ways of ensuring that we get that affordability, but we can't do it with just a knee-jerk reaction. I'm looking for some numbers here. Here we go. According to Street Easy, the upfront cost of rental apartment with a broker fee is at an all-time high. This is the upfront cost, twelve to almost $13,000. That's 47% more than the equivalent for a no-fee rental, which is around $8,700. Upfront cost just for an apartment. So for the privilege of renting, you have to pay almost $13,000 $13, basically. 
with the broker's fee in there. That's insane, folks. Now, I almost said that I couldn't do that. I couldn't live in New York. But supposedly, all these people are paying their rent. I mean, not all of them. There's there's some delinquencies, but we're not seeing a mass delinquency uh, avalanche like we saw in 2020 with people out of work and being forced to stay home. Um, but if I lived in New York, maybe I'd be making more money. So that's the thing about it. They pay more there. These people are paying the rent somehow. Not everybody, but most people are still paying their rent. Again, if people couldn't afford this, we would see an avalanche of evictions. Now, going back a few years, we had to put eviction protections in place. Everybody knows that. Uh, but now, most cities got rid of those. There's still some cities doing it. But most cities got rid of those, and people are still doing it somehow, folks. How are people maintaining this in New York City? Again, please let me know, because I'm in California. I'm disconnected. I, I can read Obviously, we can all read what's happening with these news articles and, and look at the numbers. But if you're from New York City, please let us know. How are people doing it? How are these people working at the delis, the sandwich shops, uh, the gas station, the convenience stores? How are they affording to live in New York City? Or they all come in from out of New York City? Um, does everybody just have roommates? I mean, obviously, everybody doesn't. So people are getting by somehow. It just amazes me that people can pay these kind of costs just for housing, just for rental housing. And um, I want to say something else too. I'm going to start going into other topics that I don't always have the answer to. A lot of times, I think most of the time you'll hear me say, here's the problem, here's the solution, and pinpoint the exact issue and the solution. I, I try to do that because I like to have, uh, I like to have solutions because I think there are solutions out there with a lot of different things. That nobody in a position of power, zero of the leaders are actually talking about. So I'd like to put it out there. Hopefully the word will spread. But I'm going to start opening up to more topics that I really don't know exactly uh, how this is happening. Right? $13,000 for an upfront cost. That's supposed to be the average people using a broker. And they say that a lot of people have to use these brokers. To me, that blows my mind. I don't know how people are doing it. Please let me know down in the comments here. All right, folks, let's go out to the public social media posts here and see what's happening with Black Friday. Here's somebody at 6 a.m., 6.15 in the morning this year, 2024. So that would have been yesterday, Black Friday. Let's take a look here. Can't play the audio because uh, some of them are pumping in music. I don't want to get a strike. Wait, that was a short video. Okay, it was actually an eight-second video. Let me just find a couple longer ones here that show what's going on with Black Friday. Here's one. Looks like we have some pretty good sales going on there. What size is that? Is that a 37-inch TV, 65-inch TV, 228? Wow, it's pretty cheap. This particular Walmart, not wild and violent. Like we've seen some of the other Walmarts on Black Friday. Definitely not empty. People are buying things. So maybe they just didn't get there right at 6.15. This is a different video, by the way. They're going really fast. I think they sped up the video. Yeah, nobody walks this fast. And I apologize. Let me run it back. I only had half the screen up there. Vizio 478. Wow, it's a big one. It's 60 something inches. Sales galore. Walmart. Look at that. All right, let's check a few other ones here. Let's go out to our uh, search results here. Here's one right here, Lowe's. There's 25 people at Lowe's when it opened up at 6 in the morning on Black Friday, 2024, got... A free bucket at Lowe's. Check it out. This bucket 
full of stuff. It's completely sealed. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it in front of you guys. And let's see what we get. Free bucket to the first, rewards. what did he say, 25 yeah. people? You had to be a rewards member. You had to be a rewards else, member. I got a good bucket for free. <laughs> Let's see what we get in here. Free bucket, not bad. Now, I heard that each bucket had its own thing, so we may get some surprises. Oh, I got the Lennox screwdriver set. Now, this, this isn't an expensive thing, okay? Nice screwdriver. But I actually do need to replace my screwdrivers that I got uh, in the garage. I've been beating them up all year. So this is actually perfect timing for this. Now, we also got ourselves some... Yeah, all the stuff that's been sitting on the shelf for like a year or more. <laughs> that's what you get in the bucket. Scotch guard. Uh, I'm sure they dusted it off though, so it wasn't dusty. Uh, we could use that on some car seats. That's cool. And we got a cobalt battery. Great. I'm not in that battery system, but maybe I should get into it. Maybe I should buy a couple things in it. Then I got... I believe that's the battery that'll be universal for all the uh, cobalt tools. I could be wrong. A I don't know any cobalt. Craftsman tape measure. All right. And a magic eraser from Mr. Clean. Uh, you know what? They're playing music in the background. I'm going to have to. Yeah, I'm going to have to go on a different video, folks. You can find that one on social media. Someone else commented on that video. Good thing I slept in. So, uh, was that worth getting up early? Let me just continue to play it though without the audio. Let's see what else they got there to the free bucket: tape measure, screwdrivers, magic eraser, the battery, some coupons for some free stuff. Twenty percent off coupon. Okay. You gotta count the bucket too. The bucket's part of the gift. I always need buckets. He's showing the battery into more detail. Okay, let's look for some other Black Friday videos here. Here's another one, people. Somebody driving up the Black Friday line at Walmart at before opening. Was it six up in the morning they opened? That's the line, folks. There you go. Maybe what, 10 people? Maybe 15 at the most? All right. We're going to look for some other ones. Maybe some crazier ones. We'll find out. Somebody commented, that's crazy. I can remember they needed extra security in the parking lot to control the line. Uh, not this time. Not this year. So far. So far. Maybe we'll find some crazy ones here. Right. Here's a mall. Not sure where this mall is. Woodfield Mall. Looks pretty busy. A lot of people. A lot of people. So the theory that people are broke and that Black Friday was a bust, uh, that nobody's out shopping. You might see one or two videos where, uh, you know, this, the stores are empty like we saw, you know, the Walmarts. Not too many people were at Walmart at the opening because maybe they didn't have the door buster sales, but people were shopping. I saw it today at Target. You saw some of the videos here in the malls. Uh, not crazy because I think they stopped doing the door busters because of the surge and, uh, and the danger where people were actually getting hurt and all the extra security. I think the stores, even Walmart, I think they finally realized that wasn't very wise to do. But people are still spending. Again, if the banks are still lending, people are still spending. It rhymes. And it's true. Banks are lending. People are spending uh, more borrowed money going further into debt. Um, the stores aren't going to be empty. That's for sure. All right. What do you guys think about all this? Let me know about the New York situation. Are you from New York City? How are people doing it there? Um, it's insane, folks, but we're going to keep on top of it for you. We've got big things coming up here in the next few months. We're going to stay on top of it all for you. A lot of housing news coming up in our next video. We're going to get into that. Please make sure to subscribe. Come back to hear for more financial economic news. And we'll talk to everybody very soon. Hope you're doing well. Happy holidays. Bye for now. Peace.